Welcome back everyone. My name is Joel Feld and today I want to cover the important topic of recovery contacts for your Apple ID. Here we go. Apple IDs can be quite confusing sometimes, and it's even more frustrating if we ever forget our password. Now, I do have a lot of different videos that cover the topic of Apple IDs and iCloud and resetting your iCloud password, so I will link all of those down below for reference. But this particular video is about adding a recovery contact to your Apple ID. Essentially, what this does is it lets you pick someone that you know and gives them access so that they can help you recover your password or reset your password if you're locked out of one of your Apple devices or you just don't know your password. You can add a recovery contact from your iPhone or iPad or your Mac. The iPhone and iPad are gonna be identical, so I'm gonna show you on your iPhone as well as your Mac in this particular video. So let's go ahead and start with the phone. I'm gonna to touch settings and then I'm gonna choose my Apple ID at the top and I'm gonna select sign in and security. Now this is where it has all of your information related to the sign in and security of your Apple ID. It's where you can change your password. If you need to change your password or change your Apple ID, these two videos, check them out. But what we wanna choose is the account recovery. So notice it says, if you forget your password or device passcode, you have a few options to recover your data. So I'm going to touch that. If you lose access to your account, a recovery method can help you get your account and data back. Your device passcodes can be used end-to-end -end encrypted data. If you forget your passcodes, you'll need a recovery contact or recovery key. So these are two different options that allow you to speed up the process and have a backup plan to reset an Apple ID if you're stuck. So let's go ahead and start with add a recovery contact. If I select this, it's gonna say, okay, let's add someone you trust. And there's certain requirements. They have to be at least 13 years old, have an Apple device, ask for help in person by phone, get back into your account. So let's go ahead and choose add a recovery contact. It's gonna authenticate with face ID or touch ID or a passcode on your device. And then it says, well, who are we sending this to? So I'm gonna type in learn with Joel at iCloud.com. I'm gonna choose add in the top right. And you can add multiple people too. It's not just for one individual. And then it says, I'm gonna send a message. Send a message to learn with Joel to let them know that you would like to add them as your recovery contact. You can touch edit message down here at the bottom if you want to and change some of that text or you can just leave it as is. I'm gonna leave it as is, so I'm gonna to touch the send option and it's going to send that message to that person. So on my phone here, notice I get a little notification at the top saying joel.feld would like to add you as a recovery contact. So let's go ahead and touch my text message here. So when I select that, it says recovery contact request. Joel.feld at iCloud would like to add you as a recovery contact. If this person needs to regain access to their account, they will contact you by phone or reach out in person. If you decline, Joel will be notified. If I decline here, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna to touch done here and notice at the top, Learn With Joel did not accept your request to be recovery contact. So I would need to do it again. So I'm gonna go back to account recovery, select this, do add, has the suggested because I already did it. I'm going to add in the top right. I'll get another text message on this phone. We'll do send this time, choose done. So I get another text message here. We're going to select this and this time we're going to choose accept. And it says you've been added as a recovery contact. If joel.feld needs to regain their access, they might contact you. So I'm going to touch OK, or I can choose Manage and Settings. If I touch Manage and Settings, that just brings me to the same exact location on this phone that we added the recovery contact. So notice on both phones here, we're in the same exact location in the settings. The recovery contact for this phone is Learn With Joel. And on this phone here, it says down at the bottom, Account Recovery for Joel.Feld at iCloud.com. So if I select that here, it says you are the recovery account. You can provide a code. Now, if I touch get recovery code, it will pop up and say, well, here's a code, but what do I do with it? So let's walk through the process of a live scenario of how this actually works now. So I'm going to choose done here. I don't want to remove because if I touch remove here, it's removing this account as the recovery contact. And I don't want to do that. 
And same thing on this phone, if I touch learn with Joel, I can remove that person in the future if I needed to, but I'm not gonna do that. We'll come back to this option that says recovery key because that gives you another option to safeguard your account. So let's pretend that we're out and about just so that we're not confused. This is my joel.feld account that has the recovery and we're gonna pretend that this account is locked. So now you're out and about for whatever reason, you can't get into your Apple ID, you bump into a friend or a stranger. So here, if I go and open up Safari and I go to iforgot.apple.com, I'm gonna choose reset password. If you've seen my other video that talks about resetting passwords, this will show you other options to reset your Apple ID password. But this is where we're gonna choose help someone else because this is not the device that we're resetting. I'm not resetting my account here. So this is where I would type in joel.feld at icloud.com. We're gonna choose continue. And then it needs the telephone number for this particular phone here. So I'm gonna type in 763-347-9916. So you need this trusted device, you need this telephone number, and naturally you should know this number if it's your cell phone number. Now when I do that, notice on the phone here, it pops up saying, hey, do you wanna reset your password? Well, we're gonna pretend that this message doesn't pop up. So I'm gonna choose can't get to your Apple devices. So when I select that, it's gonna say, okay, let's try round two. Let's use the trusted number. Let's send a code to this phone. Well, again, if we do that, it's going to send a text message to this phone here. And I'm gonna to touch don't allow and notice the text message. It has the code. Well, I'm gonna say didn't get verification code. And I'm gonna say, well, I can't use this phone, phone number for whatever reason, this happens. So I'm gonna choose can't use this number. So then it says, okay, it looks like you have a recovery contact. Let's ask them for help. Let's get help now. So if I choose get help now, this is saying, okay, you need to reach out to that person that you added as a recovery contact and have them provide that code that you have so that we can get into our account and unlock our password. So here on this screen, it gives us the options to touch for iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch and it walks them through the steps to get it. We can touch back in the top. If I touch Mac here, it does the same exact thing. It gives us the instructions. So what we wanna do now is go on this iPhone here that is the recovery account. We're gonna to touch joel.feld and we're gonna choose get recovery code. And now I can say I have a recovery code. So if I touch this option here, I can type in 443. 891. So now it accepts that verification code or that recovery code. It's now saying, okay, what is the passcode on the phone that has is trying to reset their Apple ID password? So I'm going to type that in as well. So now it gives us the option to reset the password. And so I can type that in and choose continue and then that will reset on all of my devices. And that's the whole purpose of the recovery account. It gives you the option to have another person that you personally know to get a code to help you reset your password. And it's way better than going through the account recovery process through Apple because that can take forever. So I'm gonna choose cancel on the top left here and I'm gonna come back to my phones here. I'm gonna choose done on this one and we're back to square one. Now, if I touch back on settings and go into my account recovery, let's take a look at this recovery key option. If I select this and turn on recovery key, it says, are you sure you want to create a recovery key? If you lose the recovery key and can't access your devices, Apple won't be able to help you regain your account. So this is a little bit tricky. If you are trying to do the account recovery on Apple, there's a link that will no longer be available. So let me show you that quick. On my computer here, if I open up Safari and I go to iforgot.apple.com, do reset password, we'll go through the steps to pretend like we're resetting our password. So joel.feld at icloud.com, type in the weird numbers here. I don't know what that says. We're gonna do new code. That's easier, VMF2G maybe, do continue, 763-347-9916, choose continue. 
When you get to this spot to reset your Apple ID on a computer, I'm gonna say don't have access to any of my devices. And this is where you have the options to either reset your password while setting up a new device, use someone else's iOS device, or use a device at the Apple store, or you see this option down here that says can't use any of these options. If I click this, this is where you go to start the recovery process with Apple. So it takes a, a longer time if I do continue anyways. It's gonna try one last time to send a text to this phone number. I'm gonna say can't use this phone number, I can't use this email address. And this is where you plug in a telephone number where Apple can contact you to help you reset the password. So I'm gonna choose cancel here because we can't get that far if you turn this option on for recovery key. So let me show you. If I turn on recovery key, it's gonna prompt me for the code on my phone here. So I'll, I'll type that in. And now it says this key will be required to recover your account and data if you can't use your passcode or trusted phone number. So you wanna make sure that you either print this off. I like to take a screenshot and make sure that it's printed, saved, whatever it may be. I'm gonna choose continue here. And then it wants me to verify and type that in. Now I'm gonna swipe up, go to photos, have that synchronized to iCloud so I can pull it up on the computer here. And notice I've done this a couple times, so I have two other screenshots here. And just for reference, the recovery key does change every time you do it, so I'm not too concerned about you seeing it. So here that photo is synchronized to my computer. So I'm gonna go back to the spot to verify the recovery key. We're gonna choose scan text. And then it wants me to view it in the camera in the bottom. And I pause there and touch insert. And so that it inserts the text there. I'll choose next in the top right. So now recovery key is turned on. I can always generate a brand new recovery key from here as well. So if I touch this, it says, hey, do you wanna replace the recovery key? And then it does the same exact thing and creates a brand new one. So I'm just gonna choose cancel here because I don't need to create a new one. So for those of you who are wondering, that's what that does. Now the point of this, what I wanted to, to show you is now that this recovery key is turned on, if I went back to Safari and tried to go through the password reset option, 8QYA, choose continue, type in the phone number, you notice that when I signed in here, I no longer have this link that was down here before that I had previously, and that's because of this recovery key turned on. So this is one of those things where it's an extra step, but you're taking Apple out of the equation where if you need them to help you, they're not gonna be able to help you. So if you do turn this on, make sure that you have a copy of that recovery key printed or someplace because you do not want to lose that recovery key. I'm going to go ahead and just turn this off and choose yes, turn the recovery key off, type in the code on my phone, and then choose back and notice it's off and we just now have our recovery contact from the Learn with Joel account. So now if we went back to the computer here, started the process again on iforgot.apple.com, joel.fell.icloud.com, U-C-A-H, continue, 763-347-9916, continue. You'll see that now this link is back and we can get the assistance from Apple. So just know that some of these options won't exist if that choice is turned on. So we added the recovery contact, it's kind of hard to say, from the phone, let's see how it works from the computer. Let's minimize Safari here. I'm gonna quit out of Apple Photos. Let's go into the Apple in the top left, choose System Settings. We're gonna select the Apple ID. So under Sign In and Security, we have Account Recovery, and this is where you choose to add that account. Here we have the Learn with Joel, it shows up there. I can click on details and I could remove that person if I want. I'll choose done. If I wanted to add someone, I'll click the plus sign and notice it's the same exact process. Add recovery account. It'll prompt me to use either touch ID or password on my Mac computer. I do someone and then it brings up the contacts to text them that invitation. I'm gonna touch back here, do not now. 
And notice, same thing with recovery key. It gives us that long string uh, 28 character code. I can touch manage, and this is where I could turn that same feature on from the computer versus the phone. So it's really identical process on whatever device that you're on. Go ahead and choose done, and that's essentially how you turn on and use the recovery contact option. Now let's say that the recovery contact removes themselves as being a recovery contact for your Apple ID. So if I went on the Learn with Joel account here, if I touch my Apple ID, choose sign in and security, go to account recovery. If I select it down at the bottom and choose remove, it says you will not be able to help regain access to the account for joel.fell.icloud.com. So I'm gonna choose remove and then it disappears. Now notice on the phone and on the computer, it gives me a little message in system settings and on the phone saying, hey, add a different recovery contact. Learn with Joel can no longer help you recover your account. So I can either choose not now or I can choose add someone else. So if I click on the computer here, I can do add recovery account and it takes us back to square one. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose not now. Now there's another option that's probably even more important than recovery contact, and that's called a legacy contact. Legacy contact is what happens if someone passes away. This is extremely important. I would highly recommend for anyone that helps their mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, honestly anyone because you just never know if someone were to pass away and you don't know any of their information for iCloud or their Apple ID there could be photos there could be documents there could be notes there could be a lot of information that you would not have access to Apple's not going to let you get into that account unless you are designated as a legacy contact so highly 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 recommend to set this up on the phone and on the computer it's pretty much identical notice in the sign in and security we have the legacy contact setup option if i touch it on the phone if i click it on the computer notice same exact process so i'm going to choose add a legacy contact choose add legacy contact down here at the bottom it will use my face id and this i can't just text this to anyone it's got to be someone that's in your contacts so I'm gonna to touch learn with Joel. It's saying now access to your digital legacy. As your legacy contacts, learn with Joel will be able to access your data stored in your account after your death. The data in your account may include photos, messages, notes, files, contacts, calendars, apps you've downloaded, device backups, and more. Now there is an option here to learn more. And so that's gonna bring us out to their Apple support article. And I will link this down below for reference. I would highly recommend that you read this because there is additional information. Just notice right here, not only do you need the access key that is generated, but you also need the death certificate of the person that passes away in order to gain the information in their Apple ID account. So I'm gonna swipe back and go to the settings and I'm gonna choose continue. And it gives us the option to share your access key. So I can either print it off if I select this first choice Notice it just pops up an option to print it and I have that legacy code down there at the bottom. I'm gonna to touch cancel here or I can choose send access key and it's going to text message it to the person I'm adding it to. So I'm gonna choose send here and then it says legacy contact added. Your access key has been shared with learn with Joel. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose done. You'll notice that on the phone here, it popped up a message at the top. So it got a text message. If we go there, it's very similar to the recovery contact. It just says, learn with Joel, I've added you as a legacy contact. I'm sharing an access key with you. If I select this, it says you've been added. I'll choose done. And if I exit out of here, if I go into the settings, I'll choose legacy contact. And now I see at the very bottom, legacy contact for joel.fell.icloud.com. So I'm going to select that. And then this is where I have the option to view access key. And it prompts me with the password. In order to view that, I need the Apple ID password for Learn with Joel. So let's go ahead and type that in. I'll choose sign in. So now this gives me a QR code with this very long string of numbers that is the access key that Apple would need in addition to the death certificates for that. 
Now, if I touch back here, below that we have request access and remove, and we'll come back to that. Remove essentially is just gonna remove me being the legacy contact for Joel.Feld, and so I don't wanna do that right now. But let's go back to the phone that we did it on. Notice at the top, it says your legacy contact learned with Joel access key has not been saved. That's where you can take a screenshot, print it off, just view it on here. And then when you go back to the account, that option will go away. And notice on here, I can also view access key. It uses my face ID and there it is. It's the same exact key. I'll touch back and I have now set up my legacy contact. If we go back, notice in the settings here, uh, under joel.fell, just says view access, but under learn with Joel, it has request access. Now this here on the, on the phone, when I touch request access, obviously no one's died, thank God. But here, I'm assuming that it sends Apple an email or sends them a, a request of some sort. Now there is another way to request access for this. If I go out to that support article, I'm gonna scroll down and there's this link, learn how your legacy contact can request access. So if I select that and scroll down even farther, notice down here, it's giving you all the information of where to access that key. And then way down at the bottom, there's another link for digital legacy request access. So if I click on this link here, this is where I have the ability to choose request access. And this is where I type in that long code. And this is where I would continue onwards. So I'm gonna choose cancel here. Notice in the top right, I also have the status of a request. If I select this, obviously there's no request at this time. And then I also have the option that says, I don't have an access key. And this is where if you don't have an access key and you still request to remove the activation lock on someone's device, this is where you need to provide proof that someone passed away. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel here. If I choose request access, Sign in with the Apple ID to request access to a descendant's device. So I'm gonna sign in with learn with joel at icloud.com. Continue with passcode. All right, so I'm gonna sign in. Notice I got the notification here, 275756. So here it says enter the legacy contact access. So on this phone, I need to view access. We're gonna paste in that key, do continue. And this is essentially where it gets me to the point to request access to Descendant's account. Descendant is joel.feld at icloud.com. But before you re can request access, you will need to provide a copy of the death certificate. If I do continue here, it's gonna prompt me to upload that. And obviously no one is thankfully dead, therefore I cannot move past this section. But I would imagine that after you do this, Apple would contact you. They actually create a special Apple ID for you to access the information. And then you would be able to have all of the information of that particular Apple ID on behalf of the person that passed away. Now, just like before, if you needed to remove one of the contacts associated with the account, the person that was invited can remove themselves or the person that added them could remove it as well. On the phone that I added it from, I'll just choose remove contact. And it says learn with Joel will not be able to access and download your data in the account after your death. We'll do remove contact. I'll swipe back to the main settings on here and notice it disappeared. If I go to the computer, do system settings, choose done here and refresh this, click back on legacy contact. Notice learn with Joel is no longer there. We've completely removed it. In case you were wondering, the recovery key for legacy also changes every time it gets created or deleted. So that would change if you deleted it and then re-added it again at a later point in time. So thank you so much for watching. I know this isn't the most happy subject to talk about, but I find that it's extremely important. So thank you so much. If you like this video, hit that like button down below. I highly recommend that you share this video with friends and family that you love. If you want to support this channel, hit that thanks button as well. And if you want to continue to learn, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.